Read all your comments. Hello Internet, I'm Dan. And I'm Chaz. This is the Wine is Serious Business Show episode 80. Moving on up. Yeah, moving on up. Moving on back to Oregon. We're continuing our Oregon tour, this time with Riesling. Yep, continuing the search for the Great American Riesling. You know, two local producers that, uh, one, you know, David Hill did pretty well with the previous vintage, so we're curious to see uh, what it's up to now. Um, yeah, pretty pretty straightforward. We're yeah, yeah. excited to get it, but we're going to start. Oh, wait, which one had less sugar? Did you say? Uh, I believe it's the enemy. I just smelled the end of the bottles. I haven't actually tasted oh. these yet. Um, okay, we'll also find out. Yeah, this is the 2009 enemy uh, Riesling, estate Riesling. Uh, comes in around just under 20 bucks. Uh, did a little bit of reading. It's all estate fruit, and uh, it's source. It's it's using some of the old vines, and the oldest vines the enemy has is dating back to 1979. So. Pretty old. That's, yeah, that's pretty cool old. stuff. It says here that it's all Yangle Carlton fruit too. For mm -hmm. what that's worth, I definitely don't have any sense of AVA, you know, characteristics in the Riesling that I've right. had yet. But we'll get there. I, yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting there. Yeah. Mmm. Like fresh, delicious apples right totally, off the start. Just totally. Really, really nice and sweet. A little dusty on the skin, maybe just a little bit. Just a little bit of minerality showing through. Yeah. Like a steeliness or something a little metallic but in a good way. Very light. But the apples are way in the forefront. Dominant. Kind of yeah. like maybe a little yellow skin apple kind of. Mmm. Smells really nice. Starts out clean. Apples are there. They become more intense on the mid palate. Some acidity sets in. Yeah, the acidity comes in pretty, pretty strong, almost like ripping. I mean, Really, really gets the sides of the palate hard for me. Uh, green apples, like Granny Smith, sort mm -hmm. of uh, tartness that lingers on the finish too. And I'm also getting like so. I, I've been enjoying uh, Saint Germain liquor in, in in little cocktails here and there. Okay. And it's like this yellow, like elderflower liquor, and, and this does have like I think a little floral note that kind of reminds you on that way on the back end, where it's just kind of like a round feel, a round feel to it. Um, that's a little lighter. You know, not quite in line with the apple flavors. Kind of fills these out the back end. The acidity sticks around for a good long time with palate. Yeah. It's kind of neat how this transitions from being like a sort of a sweet, bright wine into like a very, very tart wine. Mm -hmm. Sort of like in the mid palate. It's uh, kind of almost like two wines in, in, in that sense. I like the flavors. Enjoyable drinking, you know, I, I, the, the acidity is pretty good. I say that, that while I enjoy the flavors, they aren't uh, integrated quite as well as I like um, right away. And, and uh, you know, I'll have no problem drinking another glass of this. Mm -hmm. um, 87 points is where, I, where I'm going to fall on it. Would you say bone dry? Maybe just a little bit of sweetness? Or, but it, man, Boy, it feels dry on the it, palate. Fe it feels dry. It feels bone right? dry. Yeah. There's enough acidity that they could be balancing out some sugar pretty mm -hmm. easily there. Right. Um, I feel sort of the same thing about Dan, the, the way Dan said. Uh, I think this would pair well with food based on the amount of uh, acidity levels here and like the sort of start. But uh, yeah, on its own, 86 points for me. Sure. So, but good, yeah, good sipping. But, but good sipping, yeah. So. Well, we move on to wine number two. It was just uh, we were just talking about Gary Vaynerchuk's new project, right? He's moved on to. The wine, the wine blogging is kind of a full standalone experience, separate from the store, um, with with the daily grape. But uh, right. it, it caught my eye that he was out in Oregon recently on his book tour and and reviewed, you know, reviewed some Oregon wines, which is cool to see. Um, with with shorter cuts, and just to highlight some different opinions and, and and hopefully to highlight, I guess, some of the value that we provide having some, you know, like localized experience. He was talking a lot about how. How, uh, in his mind, with people he'd been talking to, that the 2009 vintage reminded him a lot of 2002, which, you know, I was talking to him, we haven't heard that from anybody, and, and I wouldn't say that personally. So it's. So far, not based on the wines I've tasted. Right. You know, absolutely not, but. You know, two very different opinions, obviously. He drinks, you know, probably more wine in a month than we do in a year. Totally. Um, but on the same hand, right, we, we've seen a few vintages and drink a lot of stuff, you know, focused in this area, so. Hopefully that's some interesting information. Yeah, I encourage you to check out his project though. It's a pretty good video. I've seen the, the first one and 
enjoyed the new format. So definitely like that he's out doing things, right? Yeah. And uh, and you know we hope to be bring some great interviews in the next couple months too. Yeah. But, uh, Looks like we're we're starting to line some up. So. Yeah. And 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 also to see that he's uh, like engaging the mobile audience and really making it something that people can put to use. You know, mm -hmm. if if we had if we had sixty grand to hire a. Uh, Hire a high-end web developer, you know. You would be on it. Yeah, yeah. we'd be on board with that. But, but uh, right now, we appreciate cool you watching the way you're watching. Yeah, so. that's true. Hopefully, you're enjoying the shows and the information that that uh, we provide. Yeah. Okay, so the David Hill 2009 uh, Estate Riesling, we had the 2008 on the show, did really well. Um, showed some like uh, complexity and stuff that we see sometimes outside of Oregon wines, yeah. Oregon Rieslings. So excited to try the 2009. Saw it on a shelf, grabbed it. It's like comes in pretty cheap around thirteen dollars, so that's pretty nice. Yeah. yeah. Definitely a little funkier here on the nose. Yeah. Like uh yeah, almost like the apples are a little overripe even like sitting on sitting sitting the ground, ground a little while. Little more. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like you're in the backyard picking up the apples out of your apple tree, right? Before the bees are all yeah. buzzing around you, stinging the crap out of you. Yeah, there are a little so yep, a little bit of funk, a little bit of fruit. Yeah. It's pretty straightforward. The fruit is more of like a spiced apple or spiced pear than oh, and, yeah. and not a little in, bit of a herbal note there. A little bit of herbal note and not as upfront and engaging as the uh, the uh, enemy. And you know, the question when you start talking like that is is that cork I'm pretty confident here that this isn't that this isn't uh, you know it's it's not like that. Yeah. It's not yeah. stinky or nasty or anything like that. Sometimes I don't immediately pick that out. Interesting. The funk is, is present on the palate, but not nearly as much as it is on the nose. And yeah. the feel of it, it, it makes it feel a little more round on the palate, which, which is kind of nice. Yeah. Oh, the acidity comes in strong but late. It's really very, slow. very late. Yeah, and it's like very sort of, uh, whereas the enemy was a little bit stronger with its upfront flavors, like this is a little more balanced, a little more, I, mm -hmm. I, don't, know, I don't want to use the word elegant, because I wouldn't call this an elegant wine, it's just toned down a few notches, right? Um, and pear fruit, sort of like white pears, that's what it's nice. reminding me, yeah. reminding me of. Um, a little bit of stony minerality kind of comes in on the finish along with that acidity that shows up really late. That's what, yeah, the acidity is really interesting because it's not there's not much of it when it starts out, but it really dries out well, you know, on the on the back end. Yeah. And you, I am getting like a little bit of apple flavors. Blind, I'm not sure I picked this out as an Oregon wine. This isn't isn't consistent. Again, right? Yep. It's, it's it's not as not typical for for. You know what I've experienced that before. Yeah, this is the same thing we encountered last time with the 2008. Was that it was a really interesting wine. Yeah. Last last year showed a little bit more. Uh, was a little bit more than this one. This one's not as an exciting of a wine, but still very balanced and delicious. Yeah. And and like, like we were talking about, if you like, you know, if you don't like as much acidity, or you like it to have a more gentle touch to it, I think this could this could suit you. Um, mm -hmm. I do like a little more city, so I'm going to go 86 points on this. I'm going to step it back a little bit, um, but still well put together, enjoyable wine. Absolutely. I'm going to go 86 on this as well. Um, whilst while I'm scoring it the same as the enemy, I like it for a different reason, or I, I would say I score it that way for a different reason. It is a more subtle, more uh, complete package, but just the flavors aren't as engaging. They're not as like, um, I hate to use the word forward because you know I don't want something that's going to slap me over the face, but it's just, I don't know, not as exciting. So, still a very, very nice wine. Well made, well put together. And, and when you're talking 12 or 13 bucks, that, yeah. uh, this, this, that, that brings it in line. Yeah. And, and worth checking out at that price point, too. I yeah. mean, when we're talking about this score, this price point, and it doesn't show characteristics typical for Oregon Rieslings that we've encountered, you should check them out. So, all right. Yeah. Uh, question of the day? Ugh, we didn't even think about yeah, this, did we? we're going to have to come back with this. All right, we're back. Uh, we figured it out. So we're talking about what's going on in life lately. We both just signed up for a class that our friend uh, David at, at Red Slate is putting together. He's doing four decades of Bordeaux. Like, looks really interesting, right? Yeah. A great chance to educate ourselves um, with some comparisons, you know, on wines that it would be prohibitively expensive to try, you know, on our own. So it's great to get together with people and check that out. Yep. And you just learn more, you know, totally. like really just to expand the palate and get get more experience under your belt with, especially, especially like Dan was saying, hard regions like Bordeaux where the 
price, really, you can't afford to purchase these wines all on your all on your own, or maybe you just don't want to. And our knowledge is still pretty limited too, right? Yeah. If, if if you said you know, hey Dan, here's seventy five dollars, go out and buy me an awesome bottle of Bordeaux, I wouldn't, I couldn't do it. I couldn't, I couldn't. It's tough. It's tough. Um, so so it's you know, so it's great to learn new things. Maybe uh, maybe get rid of a little of my bias, um, you know, about it being so difficult. The, our question to you is, uh, do you ever attend wine classes? You know, do you ever go to events? Specifically, like, just, just learn more about wine? If so, you know, what are they? Why do you do it? Yeah, and then what's the last one you've attended? Tell us about it. So, cool. All right, well, we'll see you at episode 81. Yeah. Bye.